Jesus told his followers to go and make disciples of all the nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father and of the Son and the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I have commanded you. Obviously, that means we are to teach the gospel to non-believers. But if you already are a Christian, you don't need to have the gospel preached again. Or do you? The gospel is simply the good news that 2,000 years ago, Jesus Christ, God himself, took the form of a human being and came to earth to pay the price for our sins by dying on the cross so that we may be forgiven for our sins. It is simply not enough to hear this and say, I get it, or I believe it. If you repent, turn away from your sin and put your faith in Jesus, God will forgive you on the basis that Jesus took your punishment upon himself on the cross. That's the gospel we all know. So why should we be worried whether it's declared within the church on Sunday? After all, isn't everyone who goes to church already a believer? Doesn't the gospel need to be preached outside the church to those who need to hear it the most? Let's look at how the Apostle Paul addressed the issue in Romans chapter 1 verses 11 to 17. For I long to see you, that I may impart to you some spiritual gift to strengthen you, that is, that we may be mutually encouraged by each other's faith, both yours and mine. I do not want you to be unaware, brothers, that I have often intended to come to you, but thus far have been prevented, in order that I may reap some harvest among you as well as the rest of the Gentiles. I am under obligation to both Greeks and barbarians, both to the wise and the foolish. So I am eager to preach the gospel to you also who are in Rome. For I am not ashamed of the gospel, for it is the power of God for salvation to everyone who believes, to the Jew first and also the Greek. For in it the righteousness of God is revealed from faith for faith as it is written, the righteous shall live by faith. In writing to the Christians at Rome, Paul expressed his desire to encourage others and in turn be encouraged himself. How? Through the preaching of the gospel. He wants to see that they are celebrating in what they know about what Christ has done for them. And we do see this elsewhere. 1 Corinthians 15, 1-4 Now I would remind you, brothers, of the gospel I preached to you, which you received, in which you stand, and by which you are being saved, if you hold fast to the word I preached to you, unless you believed in vain. For I delivered to you of first importance what I also received, that Christ died for our sins in accordance with the Scriptures, that he was buried, that he was raised on the third day in accordance with the Scriptures. As we can see, there is indeed precedent to preaching to the converted. If you are a pastor or an ordained or evangelist within your local church, I want to spend the rest of this video speaking to you on behalf of the people you address from the pulpit on Sundays. Just imagine for a moment that I'm a non-Christian sitting in your church week after week listening to your preaching. Will I ever hear the message that will save me from an eternity without Christ? Are you going to be bold enough to tell me the truth so that I may realize that my sin places me at odds with the holiness of God? That unless I repent and put my trust in Jesus, I will perish in hell? Or have you simply decided that it's easier to keep me entertained? That on Sundays I can have my ego satisfied with uplifting music and motivational speaking to get me through the week ahead. Pastors, evangelists, with all true respect, while some may appreciate that, it would actually be the ultimate act of betrayal if you won't tell me the truth. Am I ever going to hear from your words? Repent, surrender, die to self, be born again? If I'm not going to hear it from you, where will I hear it from? Something to think about. Thanks for watching.